Okay, so we're going to have to complete the square with both x and y to put this in standard form. So our first step is we need to gather our x terms together, and we need to gather our y terms together, and we got to move the constant to the other side. So uh, we're going to get x squared minus 24x. We're not moving anything from side to side at this point, so no signs change. I'm just grouping them together so that it's it's uh, more convenient for us. Okay, and I'm going to try and keep this color coded uh, to help us out. I'm going to leave a space because remember with completing the square, we come up with a new number. So I'm going to leave a space before I put my y terms together. And then I'm going to leave myself some space and I'm going to move that 144 to the other side. That does require changing the signs because I moved it to the other side. So it's positive 144 on this side. It's going to be negative 144 on the other side. Okay? We're good so far. Get your X's together. Get your Y's together. Leave you some room to, to work. Okay. Now, completing the square. We take... <clears throat> the linear term, so just looking at the x's right now, negative 24, we divide it by 2, and we square it. So negative 24 divided by 2 is negative 12, and we square that, 144. We are going to add that to our x's, and we've got to add it to the other side. We've got to keep our equation balanced. If we just add something to the left side, we change the equation, unless we add it to the right side. Then it's like we really haven't added it. We're just making it more convenient for ourselves. Okay? Then we've got to do the exact same thing with our y's. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Square it. So that's positive 4. Add that to both sides. Is it kind of coming back to us a little bit, the completing the square? Okay, we're going to do another one. All right, we're good with that. So I group my x's together, group my y's together, move the constant to the other side. Completed the square with the x's, added that to both sides. Completed the square with the y, added that to both sides. Now we're going to write it in standard form. Okay, so look at what I have in blue. x squared minus 24x plus 144. We're going to factor that. But remember, the whole purpose of completing the square was that it factored the same way every time. It's always x, and it's whatever number you squared. We squared negative 12, so we put x minus 12. Same thing with the y's. We squared negative 2, so it's going to be y minus 2. And then on the right side... Negative 144 plus 144, that cancels, so we've just got 4 on the right side. So our center, we always need to identify our center and radius. Our center is positive 12, positive 2, and our radius is 2. Well, it depends on how good of a grasp you had on the square before. If you remember completing square, this isn't that bad. If you don't remember completing the square, this is like, oh my God. Okay, so first step, get your x's together, x squared plus 20x, leave yourself some space. Put your y's together, y squared plus 22y, leave yourself some space. That 196 has got to go to the other side, so it's going to be negative 196. Okay. Complete the square with the x's. So 20 divided by 2 is 10. 10 squared is 100. Add it to both sides. Okay. Let's do it with the y's. 22 divided by 2 is 11. 11 squared is 121. Add it to both sides. Now, <clears throat> we've 
completed the square. Now we factor it. That was the whole point. So it's always x and then the number we squared. So we squared positive 10. So it's x plus 10 squared. With the y's, we squared positive 11. So it's y plus 11 squared. And then let's see here. That's negative 96 plus 121. What is that? Alex, what did you get? Huh? 25? 25. Okay, no problem. Okay, ends up being 25. So, identify your center and radius now. Center is negative 10, negative 11. Change the signs. The radius is 5. Okay? So, don't get overwhelmed with this. Look at it as a step-by-step -step process. Grouping my x's together, grouping my y's together, moving the constant to the other side. Complete the square with the x's, add it to both sides. Complete the square with the y, add it to both sides. And you just got to factor. But it factors the same way every single time. This number is always the number you square. It's always the number you square. This number right here. After, uh, when we square it, when we divide by 2 and square it, that number should always be positive, okay? On this problem, it didn't, th there's no way that you could get a negative. But like on the first one we did, we were squaring two negative numbers. So if you don't put parentheses in your calculator when you square it, you're going to get negative 144 right there. And you're going to get negative 4 for the value for y. So when you add it to the other side, you're going to get a negative number from your radius squared. That's impossible, okay? So just make sure you, you remember every time when I'm completing the square and I square that number that I divided by 2, the result is always positive, okay? The result is always positive, so I'm always adding a positive number to the other side. If you get a negative number on the right side of your equation for r squared, something is wrong. Either you didn't get the right value or you didn't get the right sign on it. So make sure that this number on the right side is always positive. R squared will always be positive. Now, our center, our numbers inside parentheses can be negative. But when we're completing the square and adding that number, we're always adding it. Okay, we're always, always adding it. It's never going to be negative um, after you square that number. So the number you divide by 2 can be negative. But after you square it, the result is always positive.